Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. together and just pray in the spirit please hold someone's hand everywhere inside and outside just pray in the spirit thank you Jesus Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, I declare that my life is becoming a testimony of your power, a testimony of your grace, a testimony of your wisdom. Lift your voice and pray. I declare it. My life is a sign and a wonder, a testimony of your power a testimony of your goodness a testimony of your glory i decree and declare my life is a testimony Isaiah 62. Let's keep standing. Isaiah chapter 62. We'll read the first seven verses. And if I were you, I would believe everything we're about to read. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth it says and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name verse 3 thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of god a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Mm. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day or night he says ye that make mention of the lord keep not silence seven he says and give him no rest till he establish until he makes jerusalem a praise in the earth lift your voice and say father i declare 
my life must become a testimony I place a demand upon your grace I place a demand upon your power pray give him no rest till he establishes you give him no rest till he makes your life a praise in the earth Shabarakatul Lord we believe your word we continue to press we continue to press until we become testaments hallelujah one last prayer point and then you'll be seated lord my spirit and my mind is open not just your spirit my spirit man and my mind is open lift your voice and pray i receive illumination Are you praying outside? Are you praying? My spirit is open. My mind is open. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated spirit of the living god we're here again and we trust the supply of your power we receive spiritual intelligence we receive illumination the bible says true knowledge shall the just be delivered therefore lord we declare by the power of the holy spirit that we are rising from one dimension to the other and tonight oh god our hearts and our minds are opened in the name of jesus christ good evening everybody it matters to god that we grow it doesn't just matter to god alone that we are saved the entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of christ listen very carefully the entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of christ your spirit your mind your physical body your life the entire three realms in the realm of the spirit the realm of your mind and even in the physical the entire tripartite dimension must be able to successfully communicate the victory of christ if one or more of these realms um does not successfully communicate the victory of christ you are going to limit the presentation of the power the victory the reality of the victory of christ will not find full expression in our lives therefore we must continue to press listen carefully to make sure that christ is a contention and it's a journey to make sure that christ is revealed in every aspect of our lives in the realm of the spirit you are sound spiritually you are growing you are conforming to the image the character of the christ are we together your life is becoming a representation of god you are hosting very superior dimensions of his presence then your mind is enlightened you are sustaining an understanding that is higher far higher than the intelligence of the average human being and then your physical environment all the auxiliary systems that support the fact that you are in christ you are only fruitful in your christian experience when your entire tripartite being participates 
in revealing the victory of Christ. If I am sound spiritually and I am anointed, but then my mind is barren and unfruitful, there is a dimension of God that my life will never be able to present. Are we together now? Yes. If I am wealthy and I am influential and I have a healthy mind, but my spirit is dead, there is a dimension of God I will never be able to communicate. The lopsidedness in the teaching about the revelation of Christ through a man, what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness, is the reason why there's a lot of unfulfillment in our Christian experience. So it's as though you should select one area where you want Christ to be revealed. And some selected finances, some selected intelligence, some selected spiritual health, some selected influence, some selected career. And so everybody just selects. And God says, no, I will never be revealed holy like that. The entire tripartite nature of man must participate in revealing all of him. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So the assignment in building you by the Spirit is to make sure that as we continue to press by His grace, no aspect of our life is left barren and unfruitful. Are we together? I have said it again and again that the vision for what we are becoming by the Spirit of God through these teachings is very clear. There is a picture already. We are not guessing what we will be like are we together the bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like but then christ has already exemplified all that we should become so we continue as we behold him as in a mirror the bible says there is a change a metamorphosis like an insect transits from egg lava pupa to the adult that's what is happening to us so never mind the fact that certain aspects of your life have not yet conformed. Don't worry. Your job is to be consistent and watch the wonder-working power of the Spirit. A woman's assignment is to be pregnant. The dynamics of the growth of the child, leave it to God. Every day she just knows that there's something in my stomach, whether she can feel it or not. And then at a point, she starts sensing that, look, this child is becoming real. And then nine months later, she gives birth to a healthy baby. Imagine that the woman gets worried and is wondering, what part of him is growing now? Is it the leg or the head? You are going to stress yourself. A system has already been designed in you. When your part is played, God's part kicks in immediately. So it's not everything that you need to know. There are things that you need to know. You don't need to know everything. But the part you should know, if you don't know it, it will make God look unfruitful in your life. Hallelujah. As we prepare for our retreat, I'm very excited about the weekend because for, for us, it's a, time, it's a time when our lives will never never be the same i really believe it's the first time we're having two day stretch retreat usually one day will be for the leaders and then everybody but the kind of information you are about to receive cannot be passed in one day you need to sit down and get this thing i prayed to god and i prayed for you i said lord they must get it they must get it when you get it it shows you said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled you can doubt what you hear sometimes you can even doubt what you see but what your hands have handled now it's too real to doubt it hallelujah praise the lord tonight's teaching is a response um many times i'm led by the spirit to just bring teachings that attempt to respond to the 
issues around the lives of people as revealed to me by the spirit or sometimes it may not directly be a revelation it may just be that when i i examine the kinds of questions and the communication of the frustration of people as they send text messages and once i find out that a people continually need clarity over certain aspects then i know that it's a sign that I should commit myself in bringing them enlightenment. And I think that recently one of the areas that I would say a lot of people have had, it's, it's a growing frustration, is why the victory in Christ, the success that the Bible says should follow a believer on account of knowledge partnership with the holy spirit and obedience what is really hindering the manifestation listen tonight's teaching is very powerful very very powerful because we know that for as long as realities are locked up in the spirit ephesians chapter one the bible says blessed be the god of our father you know uh, our lord and father jesus christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ so we are not in doubt over the fact that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ so we are blessed everybody say i am blessed, I am blessed. that is a fact the bible declares it number two the bible tells us that we are blessed with blessings are we together now and the Bible tells us that those blessings are spiritual in context. When the Bible tells you a thing is spiritual, that means that you may not be able to use your sensory perceptions to confirm its presence. It is locked up in a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm. Listen very carefully. And then number three, the Bible says it is in heavenly places that is where these realities are domiciled now follow me very carefully so we are blessed with all blessings how many all blessings all blessings this is the revelation of what grace is grace is any and everything only god can produce it's not just unmerited access any spiritual reality at all that can only be birthed and communicated by the Christ and in the Christ is called grace. Anointing is grace. The wisdom of God is grace. The peace that surpasses all understanding is grace. Are we together? Righteousness is grace. Mercy is grace. Every constituent that only the Christ can produce is called grace. Please listen. You have to understand this. I define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above. So spiritual blessings from above heavenly places, but routed only in Christ. Now the difference between grace and every other thing is that grace can only be obtained in Christ. An angel cannot be the basis for grace. Are we together now? Yes. Christ is the epicenter. Listen carefully. Now, grace is very powerful when it is taught correctly. That means if grace cannot, if that reality is not captured in the Christ, you don't, there's no point seeking it. Is not available so before you ever begin to think of the possibility of receiving and working in any reality your first assignment is to find out whether the grace of God has made that reality available and the way you know is to find out whether the Christ his person Jesus the door does he lead you to that possibility Jesus said I am the way I am the truth i am life he said many things about himself he also said i am the door not just the good shepherd not just the bread are we together now so the grace of god 
is the basis for availability of anything the grace of god has in it the possibility for a man to be anointed that is why we can press for the anointing the grace of god makes his prosperity available the grace of god makes his righteousness available listen the grace of god makes access into the mind of god access into the gifts of the spirit available this is the correct and balanced communication of grace so you approach the grace of god as a summation the holistic picture of every spiritual privilege that only the office of the christ can provide you cannot route the grace of god through any other formula that does not mean you cannot receive through any other formula you can but if it must be by grace it has to be in christ <laughs> he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places so we are no longer in confusion as to the fact that we are blessed listen we just finished a series on spiritual stability and the goal was to help our convictions to be unbending meaning if anyone gets up now no matter how well-meaning and indoctrinates you and makes you feel like there is nothing in store for you in christ you will respectfully know that as powerful as this is is an error because the bible declare that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings now the next question becomes why then because you see listen i hope you know that you are intrinsically a spirit this is very basic tonight but don't trivialize it at all say i am a spirit not i have a spirit if you say you have a spirit you are wrong you are a spirit are we together now yes that spirit is domiciled in a body according to the law of territory if you are in the realm of the spirit you don't need a physical body are we together your spirit body is sufficient for the spiritual climate but if you are in this physical realm it was so designed that you must have a material body not necessarily a mortal body but a material body a body that is made out of the material of the earth so that you can be compatible with the environment that's why god made man from the elements of the earth when bible says god made man from the dust is a generic statement it doesn't mean god used mud it means he sourced the instrument of our physical configuration from the same elements so you can look at man and see similitudes of the things in man in creation for instance the bones of man are in the similitude of rocks that's why they don't decay a man can die and his bones can be there for a thousand years just like a rock can remain you see the hair of man you see it in the similitude of grass you can cut grass it can grow back your hair so it means god made man he sourced the material for your physical frame from the environment that's why the environment should not hurt you because you are compatible if your environment hurts you then it means something else is playing out are you getting what i'm saying now it's called the law of territory so when the word wanted to become flesh he needed to come in the similitude of a material body that was compatible to the territory where he was going to come and die if jesus was going to die in venus the planet venus he would find out thank god he's the wisdom of god he would have to reconfigure himself in the similitude of that that's the reason why when angels every time angels were to come to the earth they would either remain in the realm of the spirit and by the supply of the spirit they cause the eye of an individual on earth who is also a spirit to see beyond the three-dimensional realm then the angel can now communicate to you are we together now or the angel assumes a material body is a privilege that the angels have they can translate themselves and assume bodies and then come into your realm and at that point you will not need to see a vision again they can walk like you you can now use your natural eyes you can never see spiritual things with your natural eyes now if you think you saw it with your natural eyes it's just the interpretation of your mind i hope you know that you 
you don't see with your eyes. <laughs> Look at this. Shut down a man's brain. Keep his eyes open. Will he be seen? You see through your eyes. You see. Your eyes is the window that your spirit looks through. But what processes that image is not this. That's why if you read in the book of Acts, Paul was blind, yet he was still seeing visions. That's why blind people can still be productive. Because what is responsible for imagery is not the eyes, it's the mind. Are we together now? So, the Bible tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But the challenge now is that, as you've always heard me say it here, whilst it is true that we do not seek God because of tea and bread and money and fame and prestige all of these things are not and never will be the basis of loving and seeking god but god so designed this kingdom such that as you genuinely seek him listen very carefully all of these privileges and these blessings because remember he designed them and he designed them to be the support system for your serving him is that true that means that i will serve god effectively if i say i designed something to support you it means that you may you may not necessarily die without it but you will not be effective without it are we together now many believers are getting frustrated and this is the reason my message starts now they are aware because this is the word of god that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the frustration is beginning to grow how long do i have to wait how do i know whether something is faith or demonic or that i'm not obeying something because it looks like the time that we are waiting for that which has been resident in heavenly places to find expression when a woman gets pregnant she doesn't expect to give birth in two weeks but she also doesn't expect to be pregnant forever is that true she knows that there is a period of conception and she gladly she may not know the particular day the doctors can approximate intelligently but she knows it is around a season that my edd is on the 14th of september plus or minus the doctors will give 14th of september cannot be 6th of march that is demonic are we together that's too far so there is a time period there is an approximation that is the same way with a believer meaning when you start your journey this is you now you are starting your journey you should be able complete you should be able to know that okay by the time i get here what should have been possible in my life everything may not yet experientially be manifest but there should be what i call a token a consolation something that motivates you that i got it right okay i started five years ago praying in tongues one hour every day reading my bible five chapters every day reading my moonrose book after five years i should be able to look back and there has to be an evidence in my life it encourages me to know that the ones that have not manifest i'm getting there but when your life becomes ichabod that everything at all spiritually even if there's nothing materially let there be spiritual intelligence let there be the anointing praying one hour every day for five years to the same god of heaven and not one sick person has been healed through your hands and not i mean you have not seen any clear dream that came to pass at that point you know that something is wrong are we together 
many believers are now wondering then your spirit man receives that thing you are doing well spiritually everybody who looks at you knows that you are on fire but then relative to what god has shown you you find out that it looks like certain things are not happening then you are taught that you need your mind to catch up now and get involved in the process are we together when you start working with god your mind doesn't necessarily need to actively follow are we together now you you can't get someone born again and you are teaching him principles of excellence and this and that that's that's too that's too unneeded for that level when people get born again they are exposed to fire principles of prayer how to study the word understanding the foundations of righteousness are we together repentance from dead works they need to understand the redemptive work of christ they need to be introduced to the person of the holy spirit the value of corporate gathering are we together all of these foundational things they have to be involved but then eventually now you are in need your child is in need and now your mind comes in so you start renewing your mind by the strategic communication of god's word but then you get to a point where your physical environment is desperately in need of the manifestation of those spiritual blessings this is where my teaching is now the barrenness of god being represented in your physical life you may laugh because of the consolation you are receiving from your spirit man and the fact that your mind is now catching up but sooner or later the reality of time will start demanding god to be manifest in your physical life not just your spirit alone the vicissitudes of life will now begin to compel you to need to translate those spiritual realities into a context that is applicable to your physical life otherwise you will be surprised to find out that a boomerang begins to happen that the challenge that now obstructs your spirit life will start from the natural realm physically are we together yes so this gentleman has not eaten and he's surprised that he can't pray the realm of the spirit is affected by something that is happening here he's standing and he's watching two of his kids they are driving them from school and he cannot pay and when he started with god the issue of finances was not an issue but at this point as a father of two you can't ignore it are we together and he's getting frustrated when he started ministry everybody used to meet under a tree so there was no need for bench and mat if you fell down you fell on the grass but he took it a step further and he opened a church are we together and now you don't sit on the floor in a church and he just realized that they need to buy chairs and he just realized that in that church people will get married one day and that means the reality of family life their well-being that if the families are not doing well no matter how anointed he is very soon there will be empty pews now this guy is is there is a need for the revelation of christ to find expression not just in the spirit realm not just in the realm of the mind but also in the physical this is where many of us are now apostle the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that christ was manifest in the flesh listen he appeared to men he appeared to angels the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory you only behold that glory when it dwells among you are we together even the glory of the father and the bible says he's full of grace and truth so i want to help us tonight to show us because let me tell you let me give you a very kind advice never allow your personal frustration make you doubt the validity of kingdom laws never allow your personal frustration i know this is very painful you are you are far from receiving the help of god when you take your personal frustration and create a vendetta between you and god from it and say lord as far as i'm concerned i'm doing what should be done why are things not working now many times 
the mistake is never from God. A gentleman sent me a text today, probably he's following, and he was going to commit suicide by this night. I don't mean this play, play, I'll kill myself. He really was going to do it. There's how you know that somebody means business with suicide. The kind of dreams he's having. The, somebody cannot just wake up and say, I want to kill myself. He's just looking for help. But there, there are things that can lead to, you know that this person will actually kill himself. And I was telling him, I said, no, no, you don't have to kill yourself. And the person says, usually this is it. I have done everything I know to do. Or I have done everything Koinonia teaching says to do. Or I have done everything my pastor or the word of God says to do. I'm going to make some very audacious statements tonight and I hope it doesn't offend you. If it does not work, you are missing something. Hmm. The systems of the kingdom are so flawless. If you really get it, your life will wonder and marvel at the results that will come. Now, this is an, an uncomfortable truth. But I want us to please, for God's sake, humble ourselves tonight and just lend me your attention. That if something is not working in my life and your life, there is something. You know, have you seen a learner learning how to drive? And then the learner is surprised. Why is this car moving that way? I thought you said I should talk. I'm doing my best. He thinks, based on his mind, that he's doing his best. But the professional knows what is wrong. And the learner will argue and say this and that and that. No, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't do this and that and that. When I started marking student scripts, a school of ministry students, that's when I knew that many students that say they gave me are talking nonsense. <laughs> they gave me five. They gave me ten. As that's for, for, in, for many of it is, is complete nonsense. At least I'm honest, I'm born again and godly, and I'm the one that is doing the marking from a very unbiased perspective. And I'm surprised. Ah, if you wrote this, you should be joking to expect to pass. <laughs> now, but you ask the person who wrote it, I'm just using that as an example. You ask the person, just because he read and just because he wrote, you can do a mathematical calculation and be wrong. But just because your wrong answer is part of the answers and you got it doesn't mean you passed. The answer to the question may be five, but your wrong calculation gave you two and option A is two. And you say, I got it. No, you didn't get it. You just found your error as part of the options. Are we following? I don't want to live my life doubting the things I believe. I don't want to get to a point in my life where it becomes too late to be accurate. So I want to walk with you in a few minutes and I want by the grace of God, I think for many of us, I know what is wrong. And I want to show you this night and I want you to listen. Because I'm speaking to people who are largely spiritually enlightened. So what is wrong? You will be surprised to know that the same frustration many of you are having, I had it too. Because I believe with all my heart that I was getting everything right. But looking from today's standpoint, <laughs> it was a joke. I even wonder how I can see the gaps that the mercy of God covered. outstanding success has a huge price write it down for someone this is already a deliverance because you believe that success just because the bible says he has given us all things just because the bible says the primary reason why many believers never succeed whether in ministry or in whatever area of life 
among other things is they misunderstand how spiritual things are both communicated and translated the idea of spiritual things being an inheritance in christ that word if not well explained can mislead you and make you fail now the bible is saying i have been given all things if i have been given it means my next and only assignment based on this is to receive and you are not wrong but the system of reception is every other thing i will be saying for many people we think to receive just means to verbalize by faith i receive you see it now but that's incomplete the same way the system of god giving you this you, you see the bible speaks from different angles and different dimensions and so when you are interpreting scripture you have to first understand the context what was the subject matter that was being addressed because it will help you know why certain expressions were used when paul in his pauline epistle is teaching them on revelations of redemption you notice that his communications was uh, they were always from a standpoint of the finished work of christ you will never see in paul's context his exegesis on redemption he does not ever give you any idea that there's anything to be done so he lets you know that you are starting from a position of victory and that is correct with respect to your understanding of redemptive realities but now you switch to the other dimension which is coming into the experience of the kingdom and paul begins to change his communication it is not a he's not counteracting himself he is now showing you why should i want to press to enter something that is an inheritance so paul gets to the book of hebrews and paul now surprises us and even confuses many that in spite of the fact that you have been given this he said there remained a rest for the people of god are we together now he now begins to talk of the sabbath of the church and the sabbath of a man's destiny that until now there is still a rest that means until today men have not entered into the experience of this and he says today if you hear his voice he says do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness is that true and then the bible now begins to tell us that he heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them and he now introduces something strange he said not mixed a Jimmy's wife is a professional baker. The word mix doesn't mean to talk. It means it involves action. It involves process. When you mix something, you combine factors together. And the Bible said not mix with faith. Faith is part of the many things that should be mixed. Not mix with faith. Like you say, you didn't add salt to the food. The food is not salt. There were many other things before salt arrived. But for the taste you are looking for, salt is the ingredient that must be added. Not mixed with faith in them that heard it. And so many people are unable to translate these realities into their lives. Success has a huge price. It truly is very costly. The earlier you got this, the better for you. Settle it once and for all that the birth of anything valuable is painful. Number two, like I will always say, failure too has a huge price tag. Many people don't know that it's not easy to fail. They think it's very easy to fail. If there is a price to produce the results that we need, what is that price? I'm not going to be talking of many of them. I'm just going to mention one that I believe with all my heart that many people are not doing is the price of diligence. Write it down and listen very carefully. Please don't assume you understand what I'm saying. The price of diligence. Proverbs 14, verse 23. Read it for me if you are a serious Christian. 
One, two, read, please. But the talk of the lips only does what? In all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips only will tend a man to penury. There is a dimension of entering into your rest that requires labor, requires diligence. Diligence is a trait that all successful people, whether in ministry, in business, have. Many believers are busy. Many believers are taking action, but they are not diligent. Write this down. Diligence is the quality of being productive. Write it down. Diligence is the quality of being strategic. Diligence is the quality of being resilient unbending the refusal to bow out diligence is the quality of endurance please listen to me in africa i don't know if it's a social cultural context but we have a very funny understanding about success we have all kinds of mentalities about success that are wrong in themselves. But I think probably the worst of them all is how much we trivialize success to believe that God or government or parents or mother nature owes us are being successful. Or we just feel, I may just put my hands here and there and then with just a prophetic word or just a blessing or just a, a, a little oil on it, everything just works. Diligence is not just hard work. Notice my choice of words. You must be strategic. You must be productive. Listen, diligence involves the sacrifice of your time. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your energy. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your resources. The sacrifice of your time, write it down. <laughs> ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. May God open our eyes tonight. Look at me. Let me teach you something. Everybody say time is money. Say it again. You've heard it every time, but what does it mean? What does it mean by time is money? That means that you are only rewarded when you create an event that makes men to have time for it. Listen. Listen. Come, Pastor Lawrence, and your lovely wife. I was happy to see you people. Just celebrate them. Come, come quickly. Come stand here. Don't be embarrassed. Thank God you're a pastor. Look at this. How many of you know that last year we didn't have time for their wedding? Because the event was not yet created. Any time an event has not been created in the earth realm, there is no time for it. That means you cannot commit any resources towards it because there is no time for it. Both of them decided, when did you marry? What's the date? 15th? Now, they, they decided to bring time and attach an event to 15th September. The moment they took the risk to create an event people started having time for them and resources started coming to them 
now that the event has been achieved nobody will give you money for marriage again because there is no longer time for it listen listen by 1990 there was no time for zuckerberg there was no time for facebook because that product was not created there was no event that will make you have time for facebook so a gentleman said let me make men have time and with that time will come resources and he made available an event and now we have time for facebook there was no time for koinonia before koinonia started your friday night were for something else the moment there was a vision that vision brought time to it and with that time every resource came is that true so when you say time is money time is not necessarily directly money time is only money when an event a creativity was added and attached to that time it will now make men to have time for you and with that time it will make them to have their resources so when you pay zuckerberg you are not paying him for the product necessarily you are really paying for the price he has paid to make you have time for that thing are we together now now you all have time for browsing once upon a time you could not do that on your phone somebody made that possibility with that time now goes your data your data will finish and you want to invest in when you pay data what are you really paying think well what are you paying time when you pay for a venue and they say from 12 o'clock to 6 is 60,000 what did you pay for if they give you a job and they say from eight to six you are working what are you really paying for if you take away time on earth nobody will pay anybody for anything again are you getting what i'm saying now so there is an event and then men begin to invest in this and now they are married god bless you thank you Ask him what it took to create that time. <laughs> he summarized it in one sentence. It is not. I said, that's my message. <laughs> now, but is he married or not? Please talk. You are laughing, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Is he married or not? Did the devil stop it? But it is not. 24 hours to your wedding. There's no reception. Oh God, take my shame. That's, that's, that's labor there. It's labor in prayer and faith. It's not just an activity. In all labor, there is profit. <laughs> Goodness. It takes diligence. Please sit down, sit down, Pastor. If you are not diligent, listen very carefully, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing you will ever do and achieve in life if you neglect diligence. There are many, many men of God. For instance, I was listening to Bishop Oedeko's um, lecture at, at Benson Idahosa, the university there, commemorating um, Mama Idahosa's birthday. And I mean, that that great man of god at that age was just crying out his life many people believe life is so cheap they just think just because there is the anointing that can accelerate a factor they believe that the anointing is a basis for laziness and lack of diligence many of us here the missing ingredient is that we are not diligent diligence does not mean you are not moving you are not moving strategically you are just busy around trying to hustle what business are you doing oh yeah let me join now what are you doing let me just apply i will apply everywhere by faith you believe that what you are doing uh -uh. let me show you something 
Luke chapter 14, please. Let's read two verses, 28 and 29. I hope God is talking to someone. Luke chapter 14, 28, please. Luke chapter 14, 28. Read with me, Koinonia. One to read. For which of you intending to build a tower? Hold on. So you, you have an intention. You have a vision. You have a goal. But the Bible says the first thing you do is not to go and buy cement. The first thing you do is to do what? Sit down. And then count the cost. Whether you have sufficient to not start it. Finish it. You can know you have what it takes to finish it before you start. Otherwise, the Bible will not talk about it here. You can know that I have capacity to finish this vision. Next verse. Less happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. In fact, let's, let's read the next verse. Saying, this man began to build, continue till I ask you to stop, and was not able to finish. Remember, we're talking of completion here, finishing. Next verse. Or what king going to make war against another king seated not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Are we together? That you become strategic about your life. Not just to take action. Many young people pray in tongues. They fast dry. As soon as they are done, they just get up. Just because the Holy Spirit told them, do A and B. They just get up foolishly. They, there is no, they, they don't have that strategic approach to life. A man comes with his wife. Look at this. You are married to your wife. And you are acting as if, how will the finances be run? The spirit God is faithful, is it not in this life? You are not diligent. Let's pray. Wonderful. But you are not diligent. There is no planning. There is no strategic approach. Are we together? You have real issues that need to be dealt with. But you just find a way of spiritualizing it and throw everything. Faith is not foolishness. You are sitting down. Let me show you diligence. How much do we have now? 20,000 per month. How much do you need? 200,000 per month. We are, we are far from the goal, but at least we are aware of what we have. The miracle comes when you know what you have first. Remember, what you have in your house is already a sign that you are about to receive a miracle. Are we together? Yes. If you have 20,000 naira in your house and you are a pastor, that means there's no organizing conference. <laughs> There's no organizing any breakthrough service in the name of any hilarious vision. We are not diligent and we are not strategic. How many pastors are consistently in debt because they continue to organize conferences borrowing money and they tell you it's God that did it and they wept themselves in a lot of shame and reproach. You borrow one million, invite five men of God who come for four, now, you think that just because it is spiritual, you are not strategic about your life. You will never prosper and you will not do well that way. Are we together? A man is starting a ministry and all, no members, there's no track record of loyalty and you go and rent a venue where you are paying 100,000 per month or per week. Believers, if you don't listen to what I'm telling you, you will be surprised that your life